You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and welcome to our third holiday-themed Two Guys and a Lot of Wine show this evening. And I'm back to having two guys again, and a very special guest friend of mine, Mr. Jacob Studenroth, owner of Wise Old Dog Wine and Spirit Shop here in West Hartford. And Jacob, I'm very pleased to have you on this very special third holiday-themed show with me. It's an honor. I'm psyched. And generally, we always keep our theme bubbles or something in spirit with the holidays. And, of course, really, every day is a holiday when you're a wine drinker. Right. But uh, I think tonight we're going to be drinking two wines that I think are two, two sparklings to start off with that exemplify a good quality value and something that's going to be very pleasurable to drink with your friends uh, at the dinner table and even around the dinner table. When we were talking about getting this uh, show together, you mentioned things for the holidays. And although just a minute ago we were talking about how people do tend to splurge, for us, um, it's it's always important to have wines that are, you know, accessible and approachable both flavor-wise and also price-wise. So it's fair to say that although what we've chosen tonight, at least on our end, is very, very special, they're not hugely expensive, which is, which is nice because it's, it's easily, easy to enjoy the holidays when you're not, you know, driving up those credit Absolutely. Cards. I mean, the, we've had some expensive wines on the show, and I still, the whole format of the show has always been to make wine accessible to the average person, mm -hmm. but also to make them not afraid to try things that they haven't tried before. Right. And, you know, generally the price points are $20 or lower. Mm -hmm. um, I think the sparklings fit that category. I know one of the interesting reds I brought tonight, just slightly over that. But in general, none of these price points will make people no. running for the bank or anything exactly. like that. And, well, we'll start off first night in a moment, and I just wanted to thank Jacob again for inviting not only me into his wine cellar, which we'll talk about pleasure. later, yeah, of course. but also I wanted to thank the uh, West Hartford staff, West Hartford Community Television staff for joining me in this really special event. Yeah, for so, sure. So thanks again, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. And our, our first sparkling tonight, which is one I've had a few times over the years, and I generally pull it out when I have a lot of people because it's a relatively moderately polite sparkling. It's a French sparkling. And for some reason, Jacob, whenever you tell people I have a French sparkling, they think it's a champagne. I know it's not a champagne, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's it's okay. French. It's fine. <laughs> it's French. And uh, actually, it's, it's, it's usually uh, the Louis Perdrier, uh is still, they use some of the finest grapes in France. Oh, for sure. Is. And uh, it's just they can't call it a champagne because it's not from champ the Champagne region. We are obsessed here in America, and rightfully so, with the varietal, the name of the grape. So we walk into a store and we say, oh, geez. I'm looking for a Chardonnay or I'm looking for a Pinot Noir. It's important to remember that when we're in the old world, France, Spain, um, Italy, more often than not, we're naming wine after the place. And I think that that's, you know, the way we differentiate in the store with a little bit of humor is when someone comes in and says, I need a bottle of champagne, my sort of, you know, with a smile I ask, are we talking capital C champagne or are we just talking champagne? And I think that that's, because, and, and, you know, there's there's a time and, and, and place, of course, where the really nice sort of higher end champagne comes out. But my wife and I drink bubbly on a Tuesday, so we're not we're not going crazy. Every Absolutely, night of the week, I sure. mean, there are some champagnes that you can get the moderately priced under thirty dollars, but there's very few. Usually, the really good ones start really going up in price at, from there on end. And this one still has a very lovely bouquet. Certainly, there's nothing wrong with the way this no. smells right off the bat. That's generally how I like my sparkling. It's a brute. It's on the drier side. Oh, yeah. Perfect with turkey. Perfect with a lot of food, food groups that people use for the holidays, whether you're more into uh, fish or ham or roast beef or anything. This is certainly would accompany all those meats very well. 
I really like this. Um, I like this one's bubble quality too. Yeah, a lot of people. I, I'm a big proponent of, even though that's not always the case. Jacob is the finer the bubble is usually the better the flavor. Mm -hmm. That's not always the case, no. but this does have a little bit more effervescence, more that you would say is conducive to more traditional champagne. For sure. Um, but once again, for the price point, which is under fifteen dollars, um, this is a great first drink for your guests who are coming over. Yeah, and I agree. I think that what's what's nice about it, you know, the other, just in terms of hot button things we talk about in the store, we deal with sweet and dry, you know, whether or not we can really figure out exactly what that means. With this, I think what's what's really nice about it is it's showing great fruit, but it's quite dry. And I think that sometimes we get lost in there. You know, mm -hmm. it's, we, we say, well, I want something, I, I want something fruity, but not sweet. And that's actually... That's an okay way to say it. I would say this actually has quite a bit of fruit. I'm, you know, I'm getting sort of not to put too fine a point on it, but definitely getting sort of like an apricot thing going on. I'm getting lots of sort of generous fruit, and yet it's now I'm not thirsty from having had it. It doesn't have a cloying sweetness, like you an Asti Spumante nice. or something exactly. like that. Right, and and those are nice too, but that's not yeah. what we're dealing with tonight. So it's my show. My bias has always been towards a brute tasting bubbly, yep. and uh, I mean I've, I've had some sweet. Osties, which generally just tend to be a little bit too sweet for my taste. Um, but once again, this is another example of uh, a moderately priced sparkling from France that is really, really good. I think something else that um, I didn't get on the, the flavor of it, but something else that bears repeating. You know, we were just discussing a minute ago how my wife and I, you know, we tend to you know, open a bottle of wine with dinner just about every night. And usually bubbly is not the main event you know this is something we're going to open you know with guests when we have a little appetizer or something like that i didn't i didn't realize this on the flavor but um, that's only 11 percent alcohol i meant to bring that up which and is that's another kind of neat don't important you think i mean thing. that's just great that's also why uh, a moscato actually is also good uh for a holiday sure pre-drink because the alcohol is lower right you know if you're going to get your drunks drunk uh your <laughs> Your drunks. If you're going to get your, your guests tipsy, at least awesome. <laughs> wait till later on in the evening. If you're going to let drunks into your house, just guess. <laughs> no. Um, no, I think, and, and that's something that's important. Uh, you know, obviously we all drink wine for, you know, many of the same reasons. And it is relaxing. And there's something about, as you know, chemically, something that has ethanol in it is going to be able to show flavors that a non-alcoholic beverage just can't. Absolutely. But when you keep the alcohol low... I think you keep the enjoyment up. I, I would rather have a glass and a half of this at a lower alcohol than a shorter pour of some, you know, something that's higher in alcohol. It just it makes it more enjoyable because it's Man, social. I believe this is my third or fourth bubbly champagne show. And I know real, generally I do bring champagne glasses in, but for the amount that we're pouring and it's kind of glass, you're not losing any of the effervescence and the, and the sparkling at all. So Yeah, and I, it's interesting. There's, um, ironically enough, these glasses are Riedel. And Riedel uh, has made quite a name for themselves on all of those different uh, glasses. You know, this is a this is a Bordeaux glass, and this is a Burgundy glass, and this is a Champagne. And more specific than the Champagne flute versus, you know, big sort of chalice. Ironically, even though they really specify, and that's kind of a big piece of their business, we taste literally everything for the store out of uh, the same glass. So even when we taste beers or we taste single malt scotch, whatever it is, we, we kind of keep that as a control. Now, I mean, people could say, oh, geez, I don't know. But I like it because it kind of keeps me, you know, focused on, on what's in it, not what I'm drinking it out of. I did a real show a few shows back, and uh, there was a profound difference in, the, in the, how things taste in the real right, glasses, which sure. I was blown away by. I mean, I knew it was going to be different, but I was not prepared for the difference in the flavor profile oh, yeah. with the real glasses. Yeah. So. Well, let's go right into our next one, because I'm excited about this rosé one. And, uh, you know, as people, my, my fans know, I've been a big rosé fan all summer. And uh, now I'm going to try something that's got that red hue that I love and has bubbles in it. Yeah, this is, um, this is wonderful. This actually, we were saying before, the other three wines that we're drinking tonight are all from France. Um, this is a little uh, departure to Spain. This is Cuvée Comps. Um, and... I told my buddies at uh, Winebow uh, that I would um, mention uh, that they are just a wonderful supplier of boutique -y and yet accessible, super interesting wines. 
but easy to enjoy and again not very expensive this is a bit unusual and this is going to be really neat because what a contrast to the other one um this is 100 percent pinot noir it's from spain uh cava is bubbly from spain and it can be made in a, a, a with a bunch of different recipes this one's a little bit rarer just because it has just that one grape varietal now this wine for me brings quite a bit to the party and I have this with some kind of um, grilled shellfish or a pork, but stuff that has food that has real flavor, you know, a smoke, some salt, some fat maybe, you know. Um, and I find that the acidity in this just is like a laser beam. It just goes right through it. I can definitely really see nice. that. You know, I can definitely see that. No, honestly, I mean, it's, it's a lot oh, of goodness. character in this, a lot yeah. of character, which yeah, I didn't really expect. I mean, I didn't expect this much going on both in my palate and uh yeah Juve comps is a producer um the way we say it in the shop is they make wines that go all the way up if you will they have a you know grand reserva um vintage dated uh, it's gorgeous it's rather expensive um and it's special but this for their rosé um i don't believe they have a higher end rosé than this this is just wonderful there are some um, restaurants in town that work with it Sort of as I mentioned, if some if you order a really flavorful, richer appetizer, this is just gorgeous with it. Um, it's slightly higher in alcohol than yours, but it still keeps it under control. I think we're at about 12, uh, maybe 12 and a half. And um, yeah, I like the liveliness of this one. It's rather dark too for a rosé, which is nice. And keeping in theme with the holidays, it's a beautiful color. It'll look great as your guests are wandering about your house right. or even at the dinner table. Um, and you're getting a quality flavor with a little bit of a seasonal kick in the color. Exactly. So I, that that's a that's a big plus. I mean, that's a really thumbs up on that one, Jacob. Yeah, and that's, you know, it's, it's interesting. We tend to cook, you know, just in terms of when I was thinking about holiday wines uh, for you tonight, we tend to cook with that little bit of extra butter, a little extra salt, a little extra cream. We make what my wife and I affectionately call restaurant food. You know, it's like, eh, yeah, I'll, I'll throw a little butter in the pan. Yeah, of course. Help. And yes. I think that... Uh, a wine like this, which is so tuned up and has that real fruit, that real acidity, it goes great. When we plan our wines for the holidays, a lot of people say, okay, well, I'm serving, you know, rack of lamb, I'm serving uh, filet mignon, I'm serving turkey or duck. But the truth is, much of the influence on the plate and the stuff that we all load up on, no offense, turkey, but especially at Thanksgiving, it's the sides. Yeah. It's, it's all of the, you know, that wonderful, sweeter recipe for yams, or it's the mashed potatoes, or and all those things that have all that flavor. The actual main event is kind of secondary. So we focus on those when we're pairing, not necessarily the rib roast or whatever it is. You're right. It's actually, Thanksgiving can be a very tough oh, uh, yeah. holiday to pair with, at least during dinner. Prior to dinner, there's a lot you can go with prior sure. to dinner with the hors d'oeuvres and the appetizers and whatnot. But... Uh, and actually, we're going to really step it up a notch because I, I think the two reds, which are also French reds, it's a French show tonight. Uh, actually, no, I'm sorry. Three French. French, French and a Spaniard. Yeah. And, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah that's well, all right. Multicultural we'll for holidays. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to do yours first or I should do mine first. Uh, <clears throat> um, I am I'm not familiar with yours, but I'm almost certain that mine's going to be lighter. So I think we should go there first. Yeah, I think we should cool. go there first. Okay. Then, absolutely. Uh, this is also a bit selfish because I'm, as I mentioned, my wife and I drink this all the time. We also drink this all the time. So um, I wanted to drink it with you. So when we look at the label, we're seeing um, a lot of French. And frankly, uh, if you didn't do any reading or you're not comfortable or, or accustomed to this, this can be a little bit intimidating. Absolutely, sure. Um, but when you're learning about wines, you want to sort of be able to take a deep breath. Any doodads on the label, you want to just ignore them because this doesn't mean anything. Um, and you want to focus on some of the words. The word we're going to focus on here, which is a little bit of a softball, it's nice, is fleury. It's the one that's the biggest on the label. Um, here we are in um, Beaujolais. Uh, Beaujolais is a region in France. And Beaujolais wines are made from a grape called uh, Gamay. And if Beaujolais sounds familiar, you had just mentioned Thanksgiving. Beaujolais Nouveau is that sort of round, that sort of loud label, uh, George DeBuff being the most famous mm -hmm. one. Um, while related to this, and it comes from a similar place and has the same grape, they are very different wines. 
This is 100% Gamay, um, and we call it Fleury because in Beaujolais, there are these little subregions, and one of them is Fleury. So again, we're back to naming wine by the place. So this is a Fleury Cru Beaujolais. Beautiful aroma. Beautiful. 100% um, Gamay, and uh, this is one of the few wines that, while I'm an eager sipper, I said to a wine class we had here the other night on Beaujolais, I could sit here and smell this all night. I, I love to drink wine. This specifically to me is so alive in the nose. It's so aromatic. It's so perfumed. Um, and it's, you know, we agreed the other night, the thing that everyone kept coming back to with this is that it's just such a, such a sort of sensual aroma. And I really, I, I mean that in the worst way, if you will. It's really got that it's like perfume. It's floral. It's it. It's alive. Um, it's a very provocative wine. I just I think it's just an amazing, and I know, amazing bottle. I know people hear all these terminologies and the people are saying, "Oh, what are they talking about?" But wine is an experience. And like, if I, as I've always tried to do on this show is take what we're saying here right. and try it on your own to experience what we're talking about. What Jacob's trying to say is that everything about this wine, besides the flavor, you can experience before it even hits your mouth. Right. And we talked about this earlier, Jacob. I usually just put my nose up and smell into the glass, but there's also another way to do it, which is you put your nose into the glass and breathe through your mouth. So mm -hmm. you're getting two different varietals or varieties of how you actually smell the wine before you drink it, which really was a new one for me. No one ever told me to do well, that when, before. You know, and that's the thing, it's when you're, it's just little sort of interesting tricks. And I don't know, I don't know how much of each of these things is informative, you know, for your experience of the wine. I find here with this particular wine, while it's low in alcohol, when I smell it, I love this so much. You can hear, I'm smell, I'm sniffing in, I'm inhaling too quickly. And so what, what's happening is, I think, I'm getting a lot of the alcohol and I'm the odor of the alcohol, which of course we get off of wine, and I'm getting less of the bouquet. Mm -hmm. I'm getting more, you know, sort of just the straight one notes of it. Whereas if I, there, it forces my body to slow down and I can appreciate more of the layers. And I, that's, so that's a little trick for me. I, I don't know if it works for everybody. I, I, I love it. Well, like I said, it's a mm -hmm. holiday show. I love wine. I, that's why I do the show. Jacob loves wine. And one of the benefits of loving wine is finding out all these different types of things you can do to for appreciate sure. wine more. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I know the next wine coming up, and uh, we'll get in before we wrap up the show and talk a little bit about your wine cellar, is one that's relatively a new wine. I don't. Mm -hmm. I think you told me you haven't had a Marsalon before. I never even heard of it. No. It's a relatively new grape uh, or new. It's, it's a. I think it's a breed or used to be a, or it is a breed between a, a Grenache and a Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh, neat. Okay, fantastic. Uh, but this is just a one hundred percent across the board Marsalon. Like delish. Yeah. And uh, once again, it's got some good buzz. I've only had it once. It's been a while since I've had it. And uh, I'm looking forward to see how you like it because I know you haven't had it before. And what's great about this particular wine, it's, as you know, being in the wine business, there are literally hundreds, oh. if not more, <laughs> right, right. of Endless, different varietals sure. of wine. And what's great about this one, it's it's recently cultivated, 1961-62. Great. And uh, <laughs> I'm excited. So let's see what goes on here. Hmm. It's so exciting to not expect anything right now. I'm free from that. I have no idea what this I'll is. I'll wait you take the first sip so and then cool. I'll give my two cents. Oh, it's killer. What's great about what's again in this show mm. is the differences in the two reds. First red, yeah. it's more of a flavor profile. It sort of opens up inside. Yep. This is much more narrow. Yeah. I think this is linear. Like yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. more narrow. And which means neither good or bad. It just means it's a completely different flavor. Sure. I'm also experiencing this in a very different, which I think is some of what you're saying, a very different part of my mouth. Um, the, the funny thing is that people assume that when people who are into wine describe wine, that it's a sophisticated language. Really, if I have to be honest, I'm just struggling to do it. So when I sit here and I, I seem like I'm really deep in thought and I'm, I'm you know, being so analytical, I'm just struggling with words. But, but with this, what I'm, what I'm getting is a far more focused, linear Absolutely. fruit. Um, it's, it's, it's got a great, it's got a great nose, but whereas I found the Fleury to be flashier, 
That's or a good fireworks. Word. You know, there's sort of like that high peppery spice and the low earthiness. And this is way more focused than that, right? When you say it's more powerful, it's kind of in the middle of the palate. I, this is great. This uh, is a great one. I guess the best, another comparison would be if you're in a large group of people, flurry, large group of people, personality. Yeah. This, if you're sitting at a quiet romantic dinner right. and you're being more intimate with your conversation, For sure. this is a little bit more intimate in regards to its yeah. profile. I think also where actually the two wines, and this is just my own bias in terms of the wines that I select when someone says to me, so what do you want to drink? Because of course, usually I'm sort of helping someone else. Here, I tend to gravitate towards wines that have that really wide spectrum of flavor and that aren't very strong and aren't, um, aren't big in body. This is so interesting. Very I mean, interesting. It is very oh, interesting. Love it. And, uh, you know, before we talk quickly about your wine cellar, um, I also want to say, again, thanks for having me down mm. in your wine cellar. But to go back to your original point is, there are no terms. I mean, you have uh, wine experts that right. they don't agree. <clears throat> right. So when it comes to wine and what you're tasting, what you're smelling, when you do this on your own at home, um, there is no right or wrong answer. It's what you taste, what you think you like, and that's generally how you build your own flavor profile of what you buy in the store, right. what you're looking for. But don't be afraid to try different things like we're trying tonight. Jacob has never had this one before. This is only my second time having this. I've never had that one before, though I've had Beaujolais type wines sure. before, which are very similar. But I mean, don't be afraid. That's what this, this is all about. And I think that that's a, the, the, the point I often remind uh, customers about is, you know, the, the, the name Robert Parker uh, has uh, amazing respect. Uh, he's uh, the gentleman who's credited with uh, creating the 100 point scale. You know, we talk about a wine as an uh, over 90 points or whatever. He kind of invented that. Um, and what's interesting about Robert Parker is um, he's a very angular taster. He likes what he likes. And, and, and that's okay. It's yep. great. A lot of people agree with him. But when I say to customers, nobody, nobody knows what you like the way you do. That's exactly right. You are right. in charge. And I think that, so even the most famous person, you know, rating wines, someone like Robert Parker or, or Wine Spectator, they have their position. And I, I will tell you personally, I would imagine that that actually doesn't score very highly with Parker. He, this is not, you know, as I follow what he loves, I don't think he would love that. And that's fine. He would serve great dinner to me if I were that's great, exactly. great wines at, at dinner at his house to me. But he wouldn't serve that, which, you know, it's just kind of cool to, that, to say that out loud. That's fine for Mr. Parker. But, right. uh, you know, before we wrap up this wonderful holiday show, Jake, I wanted you to talk a little bit about this wine cellar. Oh, sure. The remaining few minutes and also uh, anything else you want to say what's happening in your business before uh, we end up tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just briefly put, uh, we have, you know, our retail spaces upstairs, which, of course, you walk through to get down here. Um, much of this is, you know, storage. Uh, bottles take up a lot of spaces, as we know, and we like to keep the shelves upstairs uh, tidy and and straight. Um, down here, what's nice is what you're sitting in is uh, a space that stays 55-ish degrees all year long. That's no why I'm not what. sweating. Yeah, and 75% and humidity, and we don't do anything. The only thing we had to do was leave the floor basically unpainted, and that's how you get that. Sure. You can feel as you're down here, you're going to find when you walk back upstairs it's much drier it actually is quite humid if you're not even if you're not aware of it right now great space to store wine um we're sitting at a tasting table this is where i meet with my suppliers when i'm picking wines and recently it's the center of our cellar school which we've been doing uh, on wednesday evenings and sunday afternoons uh, folks come in uh, i don't teach the classes i have guest uh, speakers come in and do it Will that be going on in December too? It's, it's wonderful. It, it is. Uh, sadly, right now we're totally sold out through the end of the year, but um, it's been popular enough that I'm really excited. We're gonna. We've already talked to some folks, and we have four classes coming up in January. So we're gonna continue on. Right now we're booked, but that's. And you have, you guys have a web page too, correct? We do. It's just it's. We try to keep it simple. We're an old-fashioned shop, but everything is the wise old dog. So thewiseolddog.com, the wise old dog on Facebook and Twitter and and all those things. Uh, and we just, you know, we send out little updates and let people know what's going on. Well, I want to thank Jacob again because, you know, I've been buying stuff for him for a while and he's got a great business. I know there's a lot of wine shops in town. Oh, yeah. They're all good, but Jacob has a special place in my heart. So, oh, I appreciate that. Uh, you got a great store, great business. Thank and, you. And uh, check out Jacob's webpage, check out our page, Two Guys and a Lot of Wine, both on Facebook, 
Uh, and check out WHETV's uh, webpage. Watch our show. Watch all the shows on WHETV. They're all good. And uh, I hope everybody has a very safe holiday. Jacob, let's raise our glasses. I'm going to grab this one because it's already yes, full. Yes, let's raise our say, glasses. Uh, happy holidays, right? Happy holidays right. to everybody. Enjoy good wine, good food, good family love. And until next time, keep all of us in your wine cellar.